and three, and a two, and a one. It's Sunday, January 12th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that is me, Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined the length episode number, 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 uh, I forgot. Uh, 539. 539, thank you. You're welcome. And it's uh, uh, the show of delayed gratification or something. Like, it took me a moment there to remember that this is 2020. Yeah. Which I'm going to slightly fix on the dock just because. So I remember. Come on, Jeff. I you have... almost said 2019 because I'm so used to saying that when saying the date. Right, but here's the thing. You have an entire year of channeling Barbara Walters. I mean, Barbara Walters, right? Barbara Wobblers. Because this is 2020. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, the reaction I, I expected. I really watched 2020 that much. I mean, that's not the point. The point is, it was a horrible beam on New Year's Day. I have. When you say Baba Wal- Walters, I can only think of Baba Wobbles from uh, 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 Animal Olympics. I know, which was great. Which so. I, I wish it was somewhere on digital or something. It's mm. like it's kind of disappeared from anywhere. I once w- was saw that somebody had it up on uh, b- 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 YouTube the entire thing on there and it was just a delight for me to just kind of sit back and and watch it the mm. the the uh founding of what was it uh whatever that shangri-la ish sort of thing it's was. available on dvd on amazon oh shit i can't do <laughs> digital I mean, don't get me wrong. I still have a Blu-ray player, so I can still watch it, but still. But Bob Wobbles. Anyways. anyways. David has probably has no idea what we're talking about, so. Sure the fuck don't. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, Billy Crystal and Gilda Radner, Harry Shearer. It's a goofy, spoofy version of the Olympics with all animals in it. It's like Hanna Barbera comedy ish, and it was. But it, but it wasn't. Is uh, is the thing? Let's see if the full movies. No. There's a playlist of it. Is there a trailer for it? Probably not. Oh my god. We are getting completely off topic. Too late already. Very off topic. Totally. It, was, it came out in 1980. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No, let's not do that. Okay. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, Gary, what are we talking? We're supposed to be talking about today. Party. Yeah. Party. <laughs> For all the Drag Race fans, you knew that was coming at some point in this show, this episode. We were not going to not quote Adora Tolano. Seriously. Well, I had no clue. It's all good. You also prefaced that with saying Drag Race fans, so I suppose I wasn't assumed in that matter. That's okay. So, today's topic from our continuing series is what is partying? Uh, specifically, a couple of questions we'll mm. go through. Number one, let's start off with this: Do bears party differently? 
Okay, no. so that's a very complicated question. Oh my <laughs> I was not because I want to say yes and no. Because <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you all, and I think some people, maybe in the chat and other things, people who have been around the block for a while, can back me up on this. The word "party" can often mean many different things, mm-hmm. and in the bear community, especially. It's always hard to guesstimate what it actually is. For example, is it a social gathering of people, you know, maybe a, like around a certain topic, like a dinner party or a gaming party, or is it a play party, meaning people are getting together and fucking, or because there's always that third option of it is a combination of the two where a party is happening, but at some point in the evening, maybe sometimes during it switch gears and suddenly people are, things are happening. We have all been there. Don't look at me like that, Gary. I know exactly, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. All right. All right. <laughs> for, the record, for the record, your honor, David and I have not been at the same one where he's talking about option C or B for that matter. Yeah. Okay, let, me, let, let me clarify something here is <laughs> all of that that you, you just said, I think yeah. non bear gate people, non bear people did too. I mean, maybe. So it's not different. It's a different maybe. group of people, but it's still, the same type of okay situation. so okay okay so i'm gonna put it like this <laughs> girl <laughs> until until i until i found out about the bear community and everything else a party was a party where you go and hang out with people until i went and found the bear community suddenly things changed around where i had to literally think about what is the subtext what am i not reading what is in between the lines? Because I have gotten invitations to a parties, and sometimes it's unclear. And you never know what's going to happen until you get there. Well, all right. So I will say this. I think it's a matter of, like, who's hosting the party? <clears throat> like, what's the purpose of the party? Because ever since I learned about the gay community, just in the you know the broader, bigger LGBTQIA family in college, any party could go from A to option C, like at some point. Two point three seconds. No, no, <laughs> it was usually based on how much imbibing there had been, like mm-hmm. how, how much drank. And how much other stuff, which we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. In a yeah. So, so it's like that was that was kind of the inhibitions come down, the cool people stay, the lame people leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, that's so how we was, thought of it. We were young. We were yeah. Like, oh, we were we were new, young, young dumb, young. full of cum. And 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 the party I'm thinking of that I went to that I really was like. Why am I here? I feel so out of my element because it was mixed. It was men. It was women. Um, to think of it in 2020 terms, there were probably non-binary people there. Um, you know, it was it was every kind of everything and anything. Um, mm-hmm. It was not necessarily a free for all bacchanal like uh, you know that some people might think of. You know, where just everybody's doing things you know there was notably yeah bedrooms in different places different parts of the home yeah the house kind mm-hmm. of thing but yeah okay yeah just just for a perfect example um i'm gonna i'm not gonna put someone on the spot but i'm gonna talk about i was i was visiting a friend in um i was visiting a friend and we were going to his friend's big halloween party mm-hmm and he was telling me about how, like, he he has a big, you know, he makes a big deal about there being, everyone has to be in costume and all that stuff. So I lit, I had to buy a costume because I was, you know, visiting and all this stuff. So cool. Like, I'm like, all right, cool. And I, he told me, like, sometimes these parties go to 
as we've talked about, option C, where our where it evolves into option C, where things are happening. However, he explained, and the host explained, actually, but my, my friend did, that um, more than likely, put in like quotations, um, things were not going to go further down the play route mm -hmm. because the host... Um, like brother and sister-in-law who are, you know, he's, you know, obviously heterosexual and some other friends of his from work might be showing up and emphasis on the might. So they were like, you know, normally it might have devolved, well, not devolved. I don't want to use that word because that sounds bad. Transition. Um, it might have changed the transition, thank you, over to a all in out fuck fest. But more than likely that was not going to be the case due to potential guests coming that may not be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That did not stop the host from like making out with like 20 people, but that's neither here nor there. Cause it's how it's his house. Hmm. Just saying like, if that's what you want to do, I mean, you're the host. So go ahead. I mean, I mean what, if you what change does... things over, does want to taste the buffet so i mean, I mean sure of course maybe <laughs> whatever <laughs> like, i put myself specifically on a certain notice and i made sure i kept the watchful eye because that's so here's the party tip like number one for everyone if you're not sure where the party is going look for the host because mm. Just, just putting it out there. Because if the host is kind of has let things go certain ways, then you should be free to do what you want. I, I, I think that's fair. Because David, what you're saying is like, you know, they, they lead, they lead the mm -hmm. event. So if they're, you know, suddenly skinny dipping out to the pool with a cocktail in hand and showing off mm -hmm. their new vibrating cock ring then that mm -hmm. is definitively kind of like steering things in a certain direction. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Not that that happened at an actual party I went to. That was totally imaginary. <laughs> now that image is kind of stuck in my head. But anyways. Um, I, so I have been to pool parties that have, I think we all have probably been to the elusive like bear pool party that has become um, an orgy just because other than swim trunks, like most people are pretty much naked. So it's really easy to just like slip those off and suddenly, oh, there's dick. Like, <laughs> like, so I, Surprise, I've gone, dick. not, not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes this happens. How's that go? Oop, there's a the penis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> imagine that. Um, I, yeah. So, uh, uh so the first question, do bears party differently? I think they can. It's more about like, like you said, like, you know, what is the 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 leader basically doing? The hosts, have they prefaced it? Have you asked the question? Like, mm -hmm. if you got an invite, like, especially to a party that you've never been to before and you don't know the people posting the party very well, like, yeah. is there an expectation? Because I have been to legitimate parties within the bear community and outside of the bear community that were just that they were a social soiree kind of mm -hmm. fun, casual thing. Notably food and drink was involved because that's a lubricant for social activities. Mm -hmm. People, you know, they feel more comfortable. They talk about the food. They talk about the drink. They share recipes, you know, yeah. they Snapchat, they Instagram, they whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, I, I think that bears, can party differently it's just whether or not they actually talk about that <laughs> yeah. i will say like for example um a friend of mine was hosting a new year's eve party and i will be honest i asked the honest question because not knowing my friend and knowing just certain things there's a possibility of certain things happening are there and there's a possibility of things not happening because of the way that they've lived their life. Just putting it out there. I'm not gonna talk about who they are, but just, I'm saying that. So, and I asked him and he told me like, no, no, he's, he kind of said no funny business. And I'm just like, oh, well, you know, people might be funny. They just might not be funny. Um, hmm. So 
he was like, yeah, so he told, he kind of said it, like, it's meant to be, like, social food, lots of food, he said, and, and um, you know, hanging out for the midnight and all that stuff, and we didn't end up going, but that was separate, um, just wasn't really feeling like being that kind of social, All right? but um, yeah. So you yeah. bring up a, an interesting point talking about being social, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about social versus private events. And by that, like how partying can be social and yet it could also be a private party. Mm-hmm. So like, cause there's a difference between um, say going to a destination for a party. Um, like I think about this years ago, uh, Jeff, uh, you know, Rocco, who's been on uh, in the past as one of my good friends, yeah. like he is a performer. So sometimes the band has a gig and they, you know, go perform someplace. So most of the time when there's a performance, it's at a public venue and anybody can show up. But one of the times we went, it was at a members only club. And so we were allowed to go because we were guests of the band. But outside of that, ain't nobody else able to like walk in the door, basically. Mm hmm. Um, that was an interesting experience because it was in a county, um, like where I I saw lots of, uh, red colored ball caps. We'll say this is years ago before that came about. Um, there, I would not be surprised to see, um, ammunition, like firearm racks in the back of windows, lots Mm -hmm. of pickup trucks, lots of. Uh, certain kinds of attire and apparel of an agricultural kind of like thing. Wow. So that was an experience because real quickly I was like, why do I suddenly feel like the only gay in a village? (laughs) Now to be fair, Jeff's there with his fiance. They weren't married yet. Um, And the band knows that's not a big deal. The band wives know. They, you know, met Ronnie, not a big deal. Um, I invited other best friends of mine who came. So, yeah, we were kind of like, you know, that one in 10 statistic thing. <laughs> we need the one in 10. Yeah. Like the, the what was it? Six of us. Yeah. We'd be the, we'd be the one in 10 kind of thing. Because <laughs> I was like, my gaydar is not going off in this place. Like my, 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 oh, girl, you about to be in danger. That one went off several times. Mm. But it was a private party, and it was like, okay, we're here with the band. We feel <laughs> okay, but like, we're a little awkward. Yeah, not not my not my kind of thing. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> it was also very eye opening to kind of pull the curtain back on the other side, because mm-hmm. mostly since coming out for over twenty years of my life, most of the parties I go to predominantly in social events are gay centric, gay focused, gay populated, like in some fashion. So like to go to one where that was not the case and watch people get drunk, dance drunk, make a nuisance of themselves, like that kind of stuff. I was like, Oh, okay. Like it happens all across the spectrum. It doesn't matter, but you're kind of used to, you're kind of used to, Oh girl. Somebody, somebody switch out her tequila, give her water. You know what I mean? And because like, and uh-huh. and I think there's kind of like a, a a family aspect, like of brothers and sisters, <laughs> like you know this this kind of thing in between us that like even if you don't know them, you're like we we watch out for each other a little bit. But when you are not in that kind of an environment mm-hmm. and you're alone, then you're kind of like, mm, okay, oh look at Becky, she fell down again. Um, just, it was a very interesting kind of, <laughs> kind of situation. Get back on the chair, Becky. Yeah. No, 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 no. Off the bar, off the bar, off the bar. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. this, yeah. is not, this is not Coyote it's... Joe's or Coyote Ugly or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, social versus private, I think, is a big dynamic of partying because, like, if it's open to anybody possibly showing up, then... Like, you just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, where if it's a private event, you feel probably a little more comfortable. And most likely, the people there know each other. Mm-hmm. 
in some fashion. Yes. Yeah. So, like, think about even, like, groups and organizations that host parties of some kind or, like, potlucks or what have you. You know, we've all been to the bear, like, group potluck kind of thing, where even though it's open, like, there's going to be people that maybe you won't know. It's still, like, just this close, close, quote, unquote, group that um, in some way has something in common a gaming group, a bear group, a, a, a you know, even like a supper club type thing where they're doing something. And even if they rent out a space to go somewhere, that's kind of going to be their thing. So it's going to be private to some degree, mm-hmm. you know, um, maybe this many people get invited, like maybe five people get invited or maybe five, you know, 100 people get invited depending on the nature of the event. Um, more social things, bigger things, you know, I've been to, you know, New Year's Eve, because it's just, you know, was just around the corner. Um, it's kind of one of the big ones where you never know, like, going out, especially what to expect. Mm-hmm. But most people have some kind of New Year's Eve party, most bars in like, several cities have, you know, some kind of New Year's Eve themed party or event. And I mean, to kind of pinpoint on what Jim and I went, we ended up like after a while going out and we went to one of the bars that was hosting a party. Um, and t- traditionally we've been there on um, one of their letter nights where it's, you know, gay ish with like smatterings of others, you know, well, you know, the bars, the bar is considered, I believe considers itself a gay bar, but it's, you know, they always have had like, other, you know, people, bi- bisexual, you know, what have you, on at the events. Anyway, so we didn't think anything of it. We, you know, got in our leather and, like, because the event was called Daddy Issues, so we're just like, oh, this will be perfect. Like, <laughs> it works. Ha ha. Anyway, and we got there. Sorry. Just, just, we got there, and it was definitely not the crowd we're used to. (laughs) Um, While there were some people that we knew that were there, which was always good to see, uh, a majority of the crowd was definitely not like our our regular, like guys that we would see on the letter nights and what have you. And it ended up making, it wasn't, it was awkward for all of like, I would say five, 10, you know, minutes as you kind of got, grew accustomed to the vibe that was going on. Um, you know, you found your, I found a spot and we sat and like just watched the room and yeah, it was definitely a mixed crowd and it was definitely not what we were again thinking was going to be considering the name name and nature of the event. But hey, we had a decent time, but again, we weren't, that was a public social kind of event. So we never knew what we were going to, we didn't know what we were going to get. Mm -hmm. And, And since it was, public you knew you know you minded your p's and q's i think you mind your p's and q's a little bit you know you you're 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 not 100 sure how to react like your for example even though your event was private gary you kind of knew like this isn't this isn't my typical forest like i can't go hunting as it were like you maybe look there might be some fun you know guys to look at here and there but like you're not really going to go much further than that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So still, I still believe the answer to the question of <clears throat> do, do bears party differently is no. I see, like I said, I think in some ways, yes, in some ways, no, I think some ways we have a lot of different parties, but I also think there's a, a, I don't want to. I don't know how to put the word in. I mean, it's it's different people. Well, but it's not I wouldn't say that it's. I wouldn't say that it's that we party any differently than than anybody else because what what we think of might what you're probably thinking of that that might only be a bearish sort of thing is 
a similar type thing would be happening with other gays, non bears, um, and even streets, or you know, it it all all those different oeuvre of people. They these parties will happen. It's just a different crowd, maybe a slightly different vibe, but it's still in and of itself is still pretty much the same. If we're going to have sex parties, so is a group of straight people that are going to have, have uh, <laughs> sex parties. It's, it's not a bear only thing. No. And that, and that's true. I think we're just not aware of it. Like right. that's yeah. not our, that's not our sphere. That's not our bubble. That's kind of not where we are. Yeah. So I think that that's kind of one of the, one of the distinctions, mm-hmm. but, um, something you were talking about Damon in terms of like the that just went out of my head um yeah like I think that we make presumptions based on you know who's going to be there and what the what the activity is who the hosts are um so you know like is it a, a work function is it part of like your your career your occupation field or something you volunteer with uh, can be a big dynamic difference in terms of like what mm-hmm. you expect out of that. Um, it could be just a private dinner party, like True. someone who has you know like six guests over. Like maybe you and Jim have a couple people over. Yeah, uh, we've done that. And it's just right, and it's just like a dinner, and it's not like some big hoop de doo, uh, you know. And there's no subtext that it's gonna you know. At one point, someone's going to just clear off the dining room table and suddenly everyone's going to be naked. You know what I mean? Like, it's just. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. You know, maybe it ends in, you know, card games and, you know, people (laughs) drinking too much cider. I don't know. Um, Yeah, no, but that's true. Like that. I could see that happening. And I agree with you, Jeff, that some I think. Party parties in the grander scheme of the the broader scheme of things, I think you know, we all have like similar parties. It's just different guests. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, Oh, Hey, yeah. Here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a gaming party. We're all going to come together and play board games and you invite your friends. Your friends are who you socialize with. And if you're gay, then sometimes your friends are all gay. They're not always all gay, but don't, you know, so like, yeah. So like again, gay bear, but just, again, yeah. I just, I don't think that we party di- any differently than anybody else. Although there are bear runs, but I guess there could be something along those lines. Well, I <laughs> mean, I called the convention. I, I think what Jeff is saying is is accurate that we don't party any different. It's just we're not probably privy to that. Like we don't have an awareness of of what goes on. For all I know, the people across the street from me that I could sort of see into their windows, but never really pay attention to. For all I know, they might be like having some, you know, some naked sex parties, but I'm just not aware of that. Cause one, I'm not invited Two, I'm not, you know, uh, Gladys Kravitz being that damn nosy with binoculars, like staring over there every single second, um, you know, to even see any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I think, um, it's, it's a matter of, awareness in that case so speaking of sex parties mm. i didn't think reading it i know i was gonna say i don't think we could have this discussion as a topic without talking about p and p oh no and this is not to be confused with plug and play although i realize <laughs> that that actually has a whole different connotation <laughs> when you think about it please don't think about it <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, plug and play is about like equipment that already has the proper operating system. True. So, you know, no anyway. no need for to get a driver. It just it just works. So, am I, am I missing something? Like, all right, all that double entendre speak just now. Like, is this the thing? And I'm just too old and slow to pick up on this. Or are we like on the on the cusp of something new? Like. Yeah. It, it's, plug and it's, play should be the name of something in the game. This is initialism. <laughs> God. Oh my God. It's, it's just an initialism. Uh, PNP, plug and 
There is, it's not plug and play. It is instead party and play. But it's still an initialism. Correct. Uh, so for those of you that have not necessarily heard of PNP, use just some background so that you're aware not Time to be confused. Time to learn you something. Uh, sometimes it's also called chemsex or wired play. And I'm going to me, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I got educated when I was looking all this stuff up because this is not my background. Um, so party in quotes means to take illegal or recreational drugs such as meth slash speed slash Tina slash ice, as well as ketamine K special K cocaine G also known as Gina GHB GBL liquid E or liquid ecstasy or just played ecstasy. Cause apparently we got to give everything names. Well, so you don't get low. Like if you, you don't get caught, <laughs> You I, call I, it. You give these, these other weird little fucking anyway. Yeah. So if somebody says, "Do you like to party?" They don't mean like go out to the club and dance necessarily. And I will say this to the, for everyone to know: it wasn't until I graduated college. No, it wasn't until I was mid twenties that I found out what PNP means because. For those who don't know, um, history lesson, Damon lived a very sheltered life until he kind of went to college and kind of came out. And even then, he was at a small Christian college in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so a lot of stuff wasn't like really big, you know, at the time. And <clears throat> I heard it a few times and did not know what it meant. I saw the, the, the words, I got asked, if I partied, I got asked those things. And I remember as a young, dumb gay back in the day, like not knowing what it means and going, you know, like, sure, I go out to dance or I go out and hang out with my friends. That's not what they meant. That's not what they meant. <laughs> totally not what they meant. Yeah. So in this context of party and play, uh, play means to engage in high-risk sex activities, including unprotected sex or group sex. Uh, you, the understanding is that there's a combination of the two. So it's not just high-risk sex like activities. It's doing that while also chemically mm -hmm. altering, basically. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on the uh, substance, it can um, give you a heightened sex drive. It can give you a different experience of sex because some of them are hallucinogenic. So mm -hmm. you might, you know, have a, a trip, so to speak, in which you feel like, you know, you're literally being rammed by, you know, a minotaur as opposed to just, you know, this guy with a big dick. Um, you know, so there's there's a lot of different aspects behind P and P. So I think it's interesting, David, that you didn't know until you were in college, because I want to own it. Like I honestly didn't understand P and P very much at all. Until now, like when I had mm -hmm. to look all this stuff up, because I was like, sure, I've heard of it. And I kind of knew it involved drugs or something. But obviously, mm -hmm. not my not my not my sphere, not my universe. Mm -hmm. It's it's part, part, of, it, it's a bit part of, of it is getting for me. It was pretty much uh, just getting to know what party meant in that case, because mm -hmm. when you Put together uh, uh, party game and play. That I immediately, when I thought play, I was doing thinking brown chicken, brown cow. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I've used the term for I don't know how long, at least since I started having sex, uh, probably uh, that we would go. Hey, do you want to play? Yeah. So it's it's knowing that it's kind of it's that combination of the two. Uh -huh. So uh, although I, I do have to say the whole party thing, I, I probably didn't realize until or, or learn too much about. And actually, I didn't go much into it because I, all I knew was. Yeah, this is not something I would do because I knew it had something to do mm -hmm. with drugs and I just didn't want to do it. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I was able to, it, it 
came to me naturally of understanding. And I'm like, okay, you do you, boo. I'm, I'm, it's not my thing. Right. Well, and mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think it's about if you're around that culture, around the people that, you know, um, make those decisions for themselves. And uh, honestly, I don't have much in the way of opinion uh, on this kind of stuff beyond just the the basic, like, I hope that, like, this is best for you and those that are involved, which is not really for me to, to, to kind of pass judgment on. I mean, it's like, I know somebody who in the bear community is pretty open about their about their ketamine use um, and has special K parties and has friends that do that with them. I don't know if they P and P it, you know, like in terms of like, uh, you know, play, you know, and party at the same time, but I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. Uh, it took me some getting used to like to that kind of culture. And then also interestingly, they would post often about, articles scientific studies about like how these drugs can help people with depression and other mental health issues and things of that nature so like to me it was a little bit of a mixed like kind of messaging Mm -hmm. but at the same Mm -hmm. time i'm like you seem relatively healthy you seem okay so that's what i mean by like there's no real judgment i just hope like you know all parties involved are are well educated and making sound decisions i guess is the way yeah Make good choices. Well, that's kind of why. Go ahead, Jamin. No, I I know certain things for me, and I know how I feel. And personally, I know how I feel about certain things. And I know I do not want certain things in my life, as it were, or in my home. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay if you wish to do whatever you want to do like if you are on those things and that's what you want to do then so be it like that's fine but it will not with to my knowledge it will not make it past the gates of my home right or if i'm out at an event and i'm playing if i tend to play with someone i will i don't like too much and, and, you know, chemically, you know, altered states. Sometimes certain things are okay, but sometimes they're not. And um, when you're into the party and play aspects, those are the ones that I'm definitely like, I'm like, oh, no, thank you, um, kind of thing. Um, not saying that I have not, I, I will, I know I have played with someone who had done stuff before they came to my home. Mm. And that's kind of the reason why it is a big, like, hard kind of stop for me. Mm-hmm. It's not so. your thing. Yeah, it's not my thing. And and which is which is fine. Yeah. And, well, but I, you seem very uncomfortable talking about this. Well, I mean, I think it's it's a matter of like, I mean, you have to do what you feel is best for you and your own personal mm-hmm. safety in a way. Right. So. Yeah. One of the things I found interesting about like reading up a little bit online just briefly about PNP is that uh, individuals who are doing, um, you know, drugs who are also like engaging in sex activities that uh, I guess a decent percentage of them also have to involve either using um, like an ED medication like Cialis or Viagra or something because mm-hmm. the other drugs that they're taking, you know, don't allow them to really function Mm -hmm. sexually that Mm -hmm. way which i was like well that that's to me that's that's okay like that you like can you can supplement in a way but i'm kind of like yeah but the one thing you're doing doesn't allow you to do the other thing so then you got to take something for that like yeah just like and and so and i'll I'll just because i just want to throw auto cards out on the table the reason i'm uncomfortable with it is because i'm i'm a big believer in like consent i've talked about this like Often consent is a big thing. If you are on chemical, if you're on a substance that is chemically altering your brain, brain, you should not and cannot consent. So you are essentially doing things without consenting, and that's a big no for me. Yeah. 
it, how do it, you know? It, it is. Here, here's the thing: is, is yeah, it may be yeah. altering your perceptions or something, but does that necessarily completely? We're not scientists. Let's say this right up. I, I, so, wait, 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 wait. so we don't know that even if being on these substances, if you're not aware and consentable of things, our perspective okay. is you're not. So okay. to you, you giving your consent while on these uh, these drugs, to you, you don't believe that it is an authentic consent. Now, if there is somebody who knows more about this as an expert in the field mm. that can tell us more about that and can uh, 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 explain to us that, yes, that is definitely true, which it, it might as well it may as well be um as far as we know we and and there can also be what you might also consider as prior consent where before they take the drugs they've already consented that the to these things i can understand you're cringing and to you in your perspective into your your feelings this is not full-fledged consent which means that you cannot consent to this yourself <laughs> well so, i mean so i'm just gonna i'm gonna throw this out on the table and i know that this is this is and i agree with is, you don't get me don't get me wrong i agree with this you is, i'm kind of playing devil's advocate but i'm also pointing and trying to put it to to other people's perspectives and to point out that there are things we don't know and i really want to make sure that everybody understands we are not experts. We are not scientists on how these chemical reactions actually alter your perspective of your brain, whether you can make uh, uh, these good consensual decisions while under these drugs, drugs right. or not. We cannot say that for absolute certain, but from our perspective, it is not acceptable for us. Thus, so we do not participate in such events. Right. So here's what I want to say about this, because this is this is this is possibly starting a shit storm. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. preface it that way. Um, people who drink before doing things are putting themselves in an altered state. So that's one thing to keep in mind when thinking about the concept of people being in an altered state and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Some things I think we're more amenable to, like we're more agreeable, we're okay with because people might consider alcohol an acceptable like substance to that, you know, can alter you. And, you know, y'all know I've drank several times on the podcast. That was not a read that this podcast makes me drink. Just anyways, um, <laughs> we were doing a power hour for God's sakes. Well, that's not what I meant. Well, that's what that too. <laughs> I was just referring to like a week ago or whatever. So yeah. What? <laughs> but so like I, I think it's a it's a very delicate tightrope to walk with to talk about like whether or not a person is in an altered state. Here's more fuel for the fire that I'm going to throw out there that could complicate things. A parallel to what Jeff was saying though to me made me think of knockout play, where you consent beforehand to being incapable to consent to things that are done to you later. That's a touchy issue. Like yeah, I would like to have someone touchy. come on and talk about that on an LTAK. And actually I know someone that might be available to talk on such thing because they teach classes uh -huh. across the country about it. Might it might be the person so, I'm thinking of too. Probably too. Lives in Chicago? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But but they're they're the person that came to mind, and I know that they've done workshop demos uh, mm -hmm. at events that we've been to, weather well, events mm -hmm. specifically. But it made me think of that, like how the the concept is like once you have crossed a certain threshold, you are not necessarily able, in most moderate measures of of mental capacity, to make well informed decisions. I guess I'll put it that way. So. Like that become that becomes a thing. But when you were kind of when both of you were kind of talking, I thought of this moment where I was kind of like, yeah, but like, what if you give consent before you can't give consent? Like, how does that work? And I don't really know if there's an answer to that. Um, there's not really. I mean, not that. OK, I'll put it like this. Not, not there's not an answer that we can come up with. Yeah. 
Right. Not not not. It's not necessarily to my acceptability. I I would say it like you were saying to my knowledge. Right. I don't know a lot about everything going on in the world, and and in particular things like consent become very, very gray and muddied depending on how you're where and how you're going. So I agree. There are certain things that I think. I go on my personal beliefs. Right. And that's kind of where we'll go. Um, well, and I, I mean, I think that's the key takeaway for everybody is like, if you make these decisions, like we probably collectively, I'm going to speak on behalf of the two of you, like hope that you make them well-informed, like that you are uh, as aware as you can be in the circumstance mm-hmm. of what's happening. Cause I will say this. I have I a agree. couple of times in my lifetime, I think, ended up in places with people and then thought to myself in that moment, what am I doing here? Like, do I feel safe in this moment? Is this a space in which I, like, I should be? I should continue mm-hmm. to be. Like, and admittedly, one of them was a questionable environment that is a former non-operating bathhouse in which... <laughs> I was all hot to trot and I had had a couple drinks at the bar and someone was very like uh, amorous to me and I to him. And so we went to this place cause I'd heard of it. And the whole time I was like, why does this feel like uh, now looking back, I could describe it as like an American horror story movie set. Like I am not so sure I should be in this space. Um, <laughs> but then another part of me was like, yeah, but there's Dick involved. So, <laughs> You know, I mean, like, that's real. That That's just real where you're kind of like, you know, or there's hormones and there's things. And then, like, you're wondering about the building code. I mean, there's just, like, okay, it's real complicated. I'm just going to say yeah. that. So, like, I admit that there have been a couple times in my lifetime that I maybe not necessarily did make the best choice. But I lived through it and became better a person because I thought better about, like, making such decisions mm-hmm. and being yeah. and, and in being safe and sane and having consensual, like, you know, kind of interactions um, mm-hmm. with other individuals. Uh, just to bring it back to the chat, Lloyd made me laugh because he said, at such parties, if you manage to leave me some good food, I'm usually good to go for a few hours. <laughs> True. Uh, oh, oh, Lloyd, Lloyd is speaking something that we're not aware of. He said, uh, at least I don't think we're aware of, at chemsex parties, do you have consent clauses for them, including test proofs and a consent document that people add things that make things safer? I mean, again, I don't I don't know. I mean, to me, that sounds I've like going to an orgy to and signing a legal waiver. I mean, Sure. And I'm not like, saying that that doesn't happen. Like one of the things, so one of the things um, we do, Scorpius, when we're doing like demos for events, is you essentially sign a waiver, depending on where we are, like the space, whatever, you're pretty much signing a waiver that kind of says you are not, um, you are consenting to these activities and you are not going to hold liable, you know, or, you know, what have you. The, space that we're at are the persons and person or persons involved in this demonstration. Mm -hmm. Um, And the main reason for that is because it has happened. We all have heard about things like that happening where someone um, maybe gets a little too far into um, play that they were not 100% sure they were interested in and don't really know how to say no or stop or what have you, even though they've been given all of the directions to do such. And then later on, they get hurt. They get hurt. Like they are. They've 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 been hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and can go, so it's a way to you know protect the spaces in particular that we're at, but also protect the members that are involved because you were told A, B, and C. Like this is what we're doing. This is how far you are. Pretty much now in control, quote unquote, of how far this goes. Even though most of the time we don't, we've never. I mean. I will say this now, preface, we've never gotten anything back to us like someone did something really bad, like we've ever gotten someone we've caused harm to. 
But right. the main goal of those things is to protect us just in case, mm-hmm. um, you know, and protect the spaces so that they don't go back and sue for, you know, damages to their body or what have you. Um, I I wouldn't know about, I, I mean, I've, I've been to orgies before and I, I highly doubt that someone's like signing consent forms. Although there have been events, like I went to one years ago and it was a play party it was a um it was a play party and part of the agreement that you you did sign was pretty much saying that you do not hold like whatever happens here you know you do not hold the hosting parties um liable to anything that happens because you're pretty much going into the event of your own volition and can then use your best judgment to make your own consent or not to doing certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's been, you know, uh, unfortunately in the press stories of where things go awry, mm-hmm. you know, that, um, it ends tragically and, you know, and that becomes fodder for the news cycle because something that was a private event or not on the radar suddenly becomes people's business and they feel like they got to speak up and say something, you know? Um, and that, and that's always like a little complicated. I think that's part of the issue when it comes to partying in the broader, like LGBTQIA family, you know, is what are we doing? Like, what's the purpose of the function? Is it escapism? Is it entertainment? Is it like, education outreach. I mean, there's lots of different areas that can fall into, but it gets a little tricky, you know, because we, I'm, I have no facts at my ready to back this up, but I will say this. I think we often rely on um, escapism as our function because like we grew up in a world that told us we weren't, you know, acceptable or we, we were sold that like we were told like, well, this is what you do. You party, 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 you know, you drink Mm -hmm. and you smoke and you do all these things and you, you know, this is the good life. This is how you get the good life, whatever you want to call it. And I think that that becomes challenging for folks to kind of, you know, to do stuff, you know, and not have it involve, things that can alter you like that's another big thing i think that be, can be a challenge because i know um way back when i was really involved with the berg bears there was a gentleman that we had kind of talked to because he came to some of our events you know and we talked to him about becoming a member and he said well he said i'm going to be honest with you i'm in recovery so being an aa like it's really difficult to do stuff with you guys because pretty much every event that you have has alcohol involved in some way mm-hmm. and i was like uh Okay. Like, and as the events coordinator, I was like, well, now I feel like shit. Um, <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. Like his uh-huh. assessment, no. his, his assessment was fair. Hmm. Did we have events that involved alcohol? Yes. Did we have events that made alcohol an option? Yes. So he could have come to a, a potluck dinner. He could have come to a, a public dinner. He come to could have come to a coffee night. Like there were things that we were doing that did not necessarily have to involve alcohol. But notably, our one thing, our one big thing in night, our month was a bar night. Well, that's, you know, and he came to one or two of them. And after he'd revealed that he was in recovery and he showed up, I was shocked and very, very, very naive, like ignorantly naive. Because I walked up to him and I was like, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, it's the bar function. It's like, you know, it's the gathering night. And I was like, I know, but, um, and he just kind of <laughs> stared at me. He's like, what? And I was like, you're in recovery? And he goes, that doesn't mean I can't walk in the building. <laughs> and I was like, I, I know that. Like, I felt like such an ass, but I was so confused. And he's like, I'm okay. He's like, I can just have soda or a water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, and I appreciate you being they concerned don't about my well- alcohol here. <laughs> well, and he said, you know, I appreciate you being concerned about my well-being, but that's for me to deal with. Like, I, I think you're concerned about me being tempted, and that's nice to hear but not your responsibility yeah which was a big lesson because then i was like okay like 
Yeah. I'm just going to go sit over here in a corner and eat like these six humble pies that just got handed to me. <laughs> I was just like, damn, like, but it was, but it was a good learning moment to be like, just, you know, cause someone's on a journey and they're doing a thing. Doesn't mean that they can't participate. They just may change, modify how they participate. Yeah. So exactly. I think that like, that's a, that's a key piece of it. You know, and we've had that, we know, with bear runs, Damon, you know, you know, um, yeah. There's a lot of alcohol that's involved usually because that's what we we bring or we make it a part of it. But again, it's always optional. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Um, I, mm-hmm. To be fair, I've been to some events where it's pretty much just like shot, 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 shot. You know, <laughs> you know like constant yeah. drinking, which is really not my thing. Because um, yeah. there's a point I, where you go beyond buzz and then like you become buzz kill. And you're not really yeah. like – you're not really like – I have always said this for many, many years back from when I used to work at the campground uh, as a manager. I was like, you know what? So now I have to talk to you because your good time is like interrupting other people's good time. And that's mm-hmm. not a good time. Yeah. Like that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. And I, I mean, agreed. And I, I appreciate your friend. I appreciate the story, especially because that's true. Like some people can be responsible and go to a full on like, there's a bar, there's lots of people drinking, what have you, and they can be responsible for themselves and make their choices and make their decisions and not have to worry about it. I know um, just recently, especially, um, several people in our community here that are in recovery and talking about recovery and they intentionally um, are working to get events out of bars, but part of it also is they can still go to events and practice their, you know, good choices and and not imbibe and not get tempted and move on. Um, hell, two of our um, two members of Scorpius are um, in recovery and choose not to drink. We still have to. We have just because of where we are. We have events at bars and they're okay. Like they'll get like their sodas or their mocktails and and. Um, have a good time and they're fun as hell, but it has nothing to do with the fact that they're drinking. They're fun because they're fun. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I, I mean, I think that's a key piece of what I was trying to say is there's a difference between doing something because it's like expected of you and doing something Mm because you choose to do it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I usually, at an event, like if I choose to drink, it's because I feel comfortable to do so. And I'm not necessarily mm-hmm. feeling the pressure to join other people necessarily. But that took years of life experience, honestly, to get to the point from when I was in college and I'm like 18, 19, 20, and I'm underage mm-hmm. and I'm at this party and everybody is getting lit up. And by that, I mean like they're drinking and they're having fun. And I'm just like, Hi, I'm just here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I was also raised in a home where like drinking wasn't a big deal. So I was really quite like the outcast in a way because I didn't need to drink to get obliterated. Like, because it wasn't forbidden. So mm-hmm. I was kind of like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. All I kept thinking is, you're going to hate yourself tomorrow or that's not going to be fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, I was already aware of the consequence of like overdoing and stuff like that. And do not, do not misunderstand. I have overindulged in my history uh to the point at which when i was in college and living on campus the floor uh person who was kind of the responsible party came in and checked on me twice and the second time he came in he said gary are you sure you're okay i said yeah i'm fine i'm just not feeling well Uh, you know uh, you know and i said something about you know that i'll be going back to my room in a moment and he's like okay because you've already been in here for 45 minutes (laughs) And I was like, no, it's only been like five minutes minutes of me hugging hugging the porcelain, you know, throne. Um, Mm. I was wrong. They were right. (laughs) Not my right mind. Uh, Yeah. So don't misunderstand. Like, I'm not like I might seem a little preachy or a little prudish, but it's like, (laughs) trust, I've had some experiences. So I know like. You gotta, you gotta take that into. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> all, <laughs> all three of us have <laughs> been there. Well, I mean, I one way, shape, or form, maybe not that exact type of situation. 
Yeah. Well, no, but I mean, I think that's a key piece of like, you know, partying is what you do with it. Like it can be, it can be fun. It can be exciting. It can be entertaining. It can also be um, like, it could be overdone. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, some people have quick recovery. I have a best friend who recovers not quite like that, but pretty damn close. They, genetically functionally have a liver that processes alcohol quicker than most people and i wouldn't have believed it unless i'd seen it time and time again in which they are like almost knocked out drag out drunk and like 15 minutes to 20 minutes later is just like boop, like <laughs> acting sober just fine and i'm kind of like how the hell you know and then i kind of found out nope it's just them like they they are uh maybe blessed that way in a way um <laughs> So, yeah, I think that it's it's a measure of, like, who you are as a person, mm -hmm. what you choose. Yeah. The big thing for me is make the decisions for yourself. Try to make them as best as you can. And remember, like, everything, you have all the choice. So, like, if you go and you're not having a good time, you can leave. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's, there's a thing. It's called ghosting. Like we had to, mm -hmm. we had to create a word and a definition because you you have the right to just disappear, or as some people call it. No, I'm not even gonna go there. Um, there's different there's different terms for it. Anyways, some are probably derogatory, mm -hmm. but yeah, the reality is like you can just disappear. Yeah, uh, you don't have to tell nobody nothing. You don't have to explain yourself. Uh, it would probably be helpful to tell people, even if it's just a text message or something after the fact, like not after 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 the fact, like you know, within mm -hmm. a few minutes, but be like, hey. Went home. I'm okay. You know well. what I mean? Just, I'm okay. Yeah. Just not like not feeling it. Not the vibe. Um, it's also nice to be. And I will say, and I'm going to say this as well. So I'm going to put some things out there because as someone who has hosted parties in the past and been disappointed when um, people don't show up. Um, one of my personal things that a friend of mine told me a long time ago is if you are invited to a party, Meaning like someone literally like invites you, whether you get a physical invitation in the mail, you get invited to it, like say on, at an event on Facebook, or you get a text message or a call from someone. If you can't go, just be polite and tell the person. If you can tell them in advance, that's great. My schedule doesn't work. I'm not going to be able to make it. Or I'm, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, I'm washing my hair, whatever. I mean, I don't fucking care, you know. But at least if you, <laughs> if you, if you tell them why you're it, that you're not going to be able to go, it kind of gives for the host. It gives them a better idea of what to do. Um, I'm. I keep using the New Year's Eve party as an example, but it is a perfect example. I did tell my um, friend that I may not be able to go and I gave him that warning in advance to like, cause I was, you know, I, Jim was working that day. I wasn't sure how he was going to feel. He was going to be the one that would basically be driving us there and back, you know, mm -hmm. and they weren't necessarily close by. It's not like they were like an hour or so away, but they were, you know, a good distance from the house. So I kind of said, maybe, but when, as we start, as the day started going long and the party was close to happening, I did say no. Like I told him that I wasn't going to be there. Mm -hmm. I wish I had been able to tell him sooner because he did. And he told me like I had a whole shit ton of food left over because I guess not a lot, a lot of people showed up, which is sad and unfortunate. But I've been there, too, where um, I've hosted a party and um, you get a lot of people that say they're coming or, or maybe coming. And then all of a sudden half of those people don't show up it sucks and especially when you don't know why and mm -hmm. i mean there I, I had a party recently where i kind of know why what happened but um in general just like like be be polite to the host if you if you get an invitation and you can't make it then just say you can't it is okay to say no people know that everyone has different schedules and lives and we all have hundred different things going on so by all means just like i can't make it like i'm not going to be able to come like i try to do that as much as i can especially in this world of social media where you get invited to things all over the place um and sometimes you just can't make everything um so i do my best i'm not always good at it but i do my best to try to like if i'm definitely not no i'm not going to go i'm not going to say 
yes to something or maybe to something if I know for a fact I'm not going to go. Right. And, I mean, and I think that's fair when it comes to any type of planning, period. You know, if you're invited and people are expecting you to show up, like, then then say yes. Like, that's why, like, sometimes, especially when it comes to a Facebook event, as an example, I'll say interested, but I won't necessarily say going. Or mm-hmm. I'll say maybe. Because I think that's fair. Like, I've been the one on the other end that's, like, trying to plan something. You know, and it's like, if I see a bunch of people are interested, but not many people are necessarily committing, it's like, well, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I know I'm certainly not going to plan on those interested parties, quote unquote, to show up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't stress. Like try to stress stress less as as much as you can. Um, If you are invited to a party, you know, just be respectful, and if you can't make it, just let them know. Or if you're not sure, just follow up. Because depending on the type of party, like a dinner party, for example. I'm setting plates for, I'm limiting the number of people because I can only host a dinner party for 10. Okay. So, but I invite 25. Because assuming 15 people are not going to show up. Exactly. Or you say, like, please RSVP. And once I get all the RSVPs, then boom. But if suddenly you can't make that, you know, you can't make that party. Let's make sure the host knows because then they can invite someone that they couldn't invite before. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Hey, guess what? We've talked about a lot about parties in all sorts of different fashions. I think party. Oh. Anyways, party. <laughs> if you have any insights to partying in any way shape or form uh please leave a comment on our blog at comes out shoot us an email it comes out loud at gmail.com leave us a voicemail uh six year of the webs at 361 cl talk that's 361-265-8255 uh, you can follow us on various social media outlets that comes out loud in the appropriate place of the url that's instagram facebook tumblr twitter and of course on youtube and you can join our entourage chat where you can discuss the situations like um uh, 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 right now they're discussing what the heck the uh, title of this episode is meaning. <laughs> some people weren't, weren't able to make the live show, so they don't know uh, exactly. Um, you can find out when we're, uh, well, for the most part, uh, scheduling these shows and what's coming up by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col on your computer. Once you got it on your computer, you can stick that to your phone. Uh, you can also get merchandise such as this uh, version one Cubs Out Loud shirt uh, or a uh, this consent is my foreplay shirt that Gary is wearing or a hat, lovely hat. Uh, at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And keep in mind, it's not just zazzle.com, but zazzle.co.uk, zazzle. blah, 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 blah. Um, if you keep not exactly sure what your specific country's domain is, just scroll down to the bottom. There's a place where you can select your country. Uh, and no matter what, Slash comes out loud, and you got our store, and you can order from there. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs out loud, uh, where you can get uh, the pre and post shows. Uh, if you don't catch us live, you'll still get those. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash Cubs out loud. I think I just said that. Anyways, uh, you can also uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts, and uh, Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set Box Puppy Box Gun Box, stuff to your other. Um, I am Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. And that's it. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all.
I am horribly behind in the COL Entourage chat. I'm reading all this story about this cub and a co-worker. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Why did I miss? How did I miss all this? Hold on. I got to, like, read up on this. Like, (laughs) Yeah. Editing that okay. last part uh, transition to the, to the post show might be a little tricky. Was that? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just how quickly because... Damon started talking. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give it a second or two. Sorry. I Sorry. I can I can say it again. <laughs> no, you you're not supposed to say anything. Is the problem. <laughs> it's supposed to be silence for a couple seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. be fine. We're all good. It's all good in the hood. By the way, Ed said, tell the boys I said hi. Hi, hi Ed. Oh, he messaged me. Uh, oh, did he? Recently. He was listening to a year in review, I think it was. Uh-oh. He said, he said da, 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 da. just listening to the recent COL, I'm your favorite guest host. Aww. I totally blushed. Aww. I go, yep, and then give me a kissy face. Aww. He said, I really look forward to thanking you in person with some sweet kisses. <gasps> Ooh. Yep, was waiting for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not that you would, you know, just purposefully try to, you know, use the podcast for a hookup or anything. I mean, not intentionally. No. <laughs> it's Damn like it. a bonus thing. <laughs> 